Hello all, uh, let us start this session on OpenMentor.net on software testing. The last session we talked about uh, peer review and we talked about subtle points about peer review. In this case, in this particular session, we are talking about test case preparation. We talked about detailed test plan before, which is nothing but a collection of test conditions or no also test scenarios. This is talking about what to test. Okay. The next level is test case preparation. This is called DTC. It is also known as detailed test cases. Okay. The aim of this document is nothing but how to test. There is a big difference between what to test and how to test. Okay. Let me show you uh, a simple example of, right now you will be seeing uh, Google Maps. It shows, I just arbitrarily picked up two destinations in the US. One is 440 Bedford Street, Lexington, Massachusetts, United States, and then the famous MIT, uh, Cambridge, Massachusetts, United States. I asked for driving directions. It shows very clearly, uh, go to this place, go there, take this I-95, merge onto this, take exit, at this roundabout do something, right? Then turn right, you are here. Right. It says how to take and then how to take the route to reach using a car. Now I am clicking at by public transit. Then you see a different route, right? Now it is giving me different options. Now I am saying take this particular option, right? Now it says, okay, take this, walk to Bedford Street, the Alder Street, do this, do this, right? Go to L wife station, then uh, take that red line, get down at Kendall MIT station, you are there. Same two destinations and start and destinations, but depending upon what you choose, how you reach there is different. Now I am coming back to this. I am showing you another sheet over here. This is a recipe, okay? This is one of the recipes that. Uh, I got it from the net. It says to make some some food, what are the ingredients you need? Basically, the ingredients are the preconditions or the precursors, prerequisites before you make something, right? And then it says method. Step one, step two, step three, step four, step five, step six, right? Typically, these are all the steps or instructions given to somebody who is making that recipe, right? Why am I telling all these things? That's the fundamental aim, right? How to do a particular food item? How to reach a place? When you ask this question, the answer is elaborate. The answer is not simple, so you need to give, and it needs step by step instruction, right? That is what is required in detailed test cases, which is the next step in testing. I always ask people to answer this question. How will you find the focal length of a lens. This is typically something that we will do irrespective of the country you, that you live in. Around 5th or 6th grade or even 6th or 7th grade you will be facing this. How to find the focal length of a lens? Again, to answer this question, if you typically watch this, this is the aim, right? How are you going to find this? Then, you always do something like apparatus required, right? 
you may require the lens, the lens stand, then the screen, then the object source, right? A measuring scale to find the distance, right? Paper and pencil. Then you also need a procedure. Procedure is nothing but step by step, okay? Take the lens, fix it on the lens stand, right? Place on one end of the lens is uh, your uh, light source. On the other side of the lens, place the screen. Adjust the screen to get the sharp image of the light source, right? Take the distance between uh, lens and source equal to U, right? The distance between lens and screen is V, right? Then focal length F is equal to UV by U plus V, right? F is equal to UV divided by U plus V, right? This is the formula. Then do this experiment with the different distances of U and V. Then calculate the average. That's the procedure. Then you have a conclusion, right? Whatever readings that you find in the lab, you conclude, oh, this is the focal length. F is equal to 15.27 centimeters, right? What to do? Find the focal length of lens. How to do? Then you need to answer all these things, right? Same way, when it comes to software testing, I ask you a question, okay? What will you test, right? That's what you answered in the scenarios. Uh, a simple thing will be like, okay? Uh, add a contact. Let us take the same instant messenger because people are familiar with instant messenger. Add a contact. That's what I want to do. Okay. If you want to do this, apply the same rules. What do you require? Right. Um, what to test? Right. Then what is you? What are the things that you need? Right. What you need to add the contact? Okay. Then. Then what are the what are the steps? Right? Then at the end of it, what do you expect? Right? There are different things that you need to answer. The moment you ask the question how, what to do, what you need before that, what are you the steps, then what do you expect after that? Now I want to test this scenario add a contact what you need then right then user must be logged in right so the user who is adding that must be logged in then another precondition for adding a contact must be contact must be within the domain suppose you are adding a contact in yahoo messenger or uh, skype right or msn messenger that contact must be within the domain right so i need these two things before i start adding the contact now what are the steps right go to contacts page click add button right enter contact name and the email right click save button right expected result is right contact is added to your list right and then uh, you can always see contact appears with offline status because most of the messengers it needs an approval from the other contact to appear online right if you watch this what is the test what you need before the test what are the steps what do you expect the same thing that we always have as a different headings this is called test description this is called prerequisites 
These are all the standard terminologies all over the world that people use in testing, right? This is nothing but test steps. This is also known as expected results. In some company, they also have instruction to write the test data, okay? They will always say, okay, don't write two different fields in the same line. You say, enter contact name, right? Then they always ask you to say, enter contact email, okay? Then they will suggest you to have one more column in between these two, okay? I'm inserting a column, right? This is nothing but test data. What is the data that you want to enter here is say um, James and then say James 101 at uh, xxxx.com, right? Again, I'm just using some arbitrary names, okay? This is nothing but if you write like this, this is nothing but the test case. A test case is elaborate. What to test, what you need before the test, what are your steps, what is your test data, what do you expect. Again, if you look in the test steps, I start with a simple verb, go, click, enter, or type, click, right? Put the data over here, right? Again, the test description starts with a scenario, add a contact, something like that. Typically, we try to do it in simple present tense, right? Uh, either you can say contact is added to your list or you can even phrase it contact should be added to your list. Either use should be or must be or use simple sentences, right? Simple present tense, right? So that it is very clear without any ambiguity. Now, I want to add another test case, right? Delete a contact, right? Then, I can do a cut and paste. Okay, user must be logged in within this. This is the same prerequisite, right? Contact must be present in my contact list. So, if it is not present in my list, how can I delete it, right? Now, I can say, what are all the steps to be done? Go to contacts page. Select the contact, right? Contact name, I'm saying James, right? Click delete button. Expected result is a confirmation box appears, okay? Or you can always say, if it is confusing to you, you can always say uh, contact uh, should be added, right? Because some people get uh, confused with simple present tense and this should kind of a phrase. Contact should appear, right? A confirmation box should appear, okay? Again, I prefer a simple sentence like a confirmation box appears, right? Then, uh, click yes. What is the expected result? Contact must be deleted, right? Or say contact should be deleted. But if you use a simple sentence like contact is deleted or confirmation box appears, use that consistently. If you use the word should be, use that word should be. If you use the word must be, use that consistently. All we need is a consistency. Now, pretty much like we have got test condition ID, we need to have test case ID also. Give a test case ID as well. For example, uh, manage contact 001, uh, manage contact 002, pretty much like you give a test condition ID within the module, two or three character prefix for the module, then a running sequence number, give that. That's a typical test case that we have got. Ideally, if you take this, these are all derived out of test conditions. For every condition, if you add prerequisites, steps, data, and expected results. This is more detailed. This is called a test case, right? Why do I need the test case? Number one, number one, test case increases your clarity. 
the moment you write a test case your understanding goes sky high second thing is this can be given to another person to actually run it if you want to execute the test case you need not be doing it i can give it to somebody else that person can execute it okay also if you don't write these steps right there is there are different ways to do the same thing but how do i remember all those different ways of doing human mind is forgetful you cannot remember all information within your brain so better to put it on paper then you just follow that right very simple thing an identifier what to test which is the test description prerequisite is what you need before starting the test test steps are instructions to do the test test data is what you are going to enter on the screen expected result is nothing but what should happen if i do this right again you don't have to write expected results for every single line all uh, right because it will be too cumbersome to write it write very important ones that you want as an outcome of the test same way i can add thousands of test cases right these test cases are nothing but step by step instruction that you can give it to a robot right that can execute the test so that if someone follows this test it will be consistent pretty much like if you follow a consistent recipe the output is predictable right so we want predictable repeatable results in testing for that we need test cases right some companies call test cases as test scripts right again typically the word script has been derived out of this drama script or play script right uh, for a for conducting a stage drama or a play they will write step by step instructions who should walk to the middle of the stage who should go out what should be placed how should be the lighting they will give all the instructions so it is derived out of the play script or drama script again a test script also means test case but again there is a differentiation between the test case and test script test case are written clearly in natural language right test case in natural language always okay in test script we differentiate manual script manual test script and automation script okay manual script in is in natural language and automation scripts are in programming language okay or like there are a lot of testing tools these are all called automation testing tools for that again you have to give step by step instructions for that you will not use english you may use something like javascript vb script java or dot net that's called automation script so test script it can be a manual test script if it is in natural language it is automation script if it is in a programming language okay i hope you are now clear on the testing test planning part again test case also goes through review because fundamental rule prevails any document you make that should be reviewed by another person simple mtp is reviewed dtp is reviewed dtc which is nothing but test case that is also reviewed again whether you do inspection or walk through or peer review or desk checking doesn't matter but if you got test case that should be reviewed by another person right any document you do in software must be reviewed by at least one other person other than you is this clear so that just to summarize test planning phase contains understanding specs then asking clarifications from the client then preparation of mtp right 
then review the MTP which is nothing but master test plan then preparation of DTP then DTP review then preparation of detailed test cases then detailed test cases review so the test planning involves all these one two three four five six seven eight steps only after this part we will go for test execution and analysis okay I'll stop here we will continue in the next session thank you